watch it. I'm sure. I'm sure that uh, everyone. Uh, I'll get there, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dad. You, you, you should do gags at the end. Dad. All right, hi guys. Cam here at uh, at the Battler Workshop, and I'm here with my young son Daniel. <laughs> this is about the fifth take. <laughs> um, it's that time of the year again. It's uh, it's Emma's um, spare room's uh, tool competition, and, and a big thank you to Emma for putting this on for us. And uh, it's predominantly for us little channels to get involved and uh, and show people what we have to offer, and we certainly have something to offer. Uh, there's certainly the big YouTube channels out there, but. Um, our little shows, I think we've got something special and uh, there's a lot of guys that go into the competition and uh, there's some fantastic entries in there at the moment so uh, get along and uh, and have a look at uh, what other people have to offer and uh, if you like it and you like their channel, subscribe to them. Uh, as I said, we're only little channels and uh, we're a little fish in the big sea so uh, sometimes it's nice to get this exposure and Emma's certainly done that for us. Um, my competition piece is a cant twist clamp, or a pair of them actually. Uh, it's something that I've wanted to do for a little while. Uh, something I looked at purchasing, but um, they're fairly expensive here in Australia. So uh, I couldn't really justify the cost. So um, I've drawn one up, as I always do, and uh, we've, uh, we've gone ahead and made one, and then we've done a test at the very end. So stick around, hope you enjoy it. And as I said, um, have a look at uh, whatever else is, has to offer in this competition. Uh, as I said, there's some fantastic memories, uh, entries. <laughs> I'm getting there, Dan. I'm getting there, mate. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see you at the end. Um, link to uh, Emma's spare room workshop um, down uh, down in the description. So uh, pop in and have a look at what Emma has to offer too. She's got a great little channel. I uh, really enjoy watching uh, watching her antics and what she gets up to and uh, and what she makes in, in her workshop. So check it out. Okay, guys. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, just a bit of a close-up on the uh, can't twist clamps. Try saying that fast. <laughs> um, I've shown it in the open position, so we've got about an 80 millimetre mouth. Closed up, we've got about a 72 millimetre throat. So that's the general arrangement, open and closed. And then I've got the series of details for the side plates, the inner side plates, and the various other components that go to make that up. So a little bit of work in it. We'll try and stretch it out for at least, what do you reckon, Emma, 20 episodes? <laughs> we'll see if we can squeeze it into one anyway got to keep within the rules all right guys uh, I think what we'll start off with first is we'll make up the, uh, the side plates so I've got some um, off cut that I got for my uh, for my metal dealer at a good price three mil and uh, we'll get these laid out um, normally you would have done these with a laser cutter just done the DXF code and, and got them laser cut but uh, as this is a do-it-yourself show we're going to uh, Cut these out with uh, with a grinding disc, and then we'll uh, and then we'll mill them all up nice and smooth from there. All right, guys, we'll uh, we'll see when we get started. Right, guys, this is our bit of stock we're going to use for the uh, for the side plates for the cant twist clamps. Uh, it's a bit of off cut I actually got from my uh, from um, my local metal supplier, so it only cost me the uh, the cost of scrap. It's two hundred and three millimeters wide. That's about nine hundred deep. So I've done a quick drawing of what we need, so we're going to need 366, that's the shape they're going to be. I'm going to cut these up into wafers, slip them over. I've drawn out a full size set here, we'll stick them down and I'll put them into the uh, bandsaw, which I'll convert from horizontal to vertical, and we'll bandsaw them out. Uh, tack weld them all together and, uh, and machine them out as a gang. Alright, let's okay, go on the guys. go. Easiest way to slip this up is I just use a bit of angle just as a fence. I've marked down my uh, my line that I want to cut. I'll just slip these up into the wafers and then we'll slip them up the other way and we'll get set up in the bandsaw. <laughs> Alright well, guys, um, we're just going to do the uh, the long plates first. So I've got these set up uh, on the mill, backed up against the tenon to square them off and I've just squared that edge off with a square, clamped them down. Um, I've just done a little drawing of what we're going to be doing uh, as far as the cutouts. So um, we're going to be drilling a 12 mil hole in here. I've got an offset of two millimeters, which will be my cleanup. Uh, that'll be my bandsaw lines down through there. Once we've got that done, um, we'll then tack weld the whole set together, and then uh, we'll mark them out and start milling to size. So that's the large one, and that's the small arm. 
All right, guys, so I've got my datum set up. We'll, uh, we'll get these drilled through. Okay guys, plan here is to um, just tack weld these together as a group Then I can do the uh, drilling and reaming for all the uh, support holes to put the uh, support pins in I can do all the um, OD machining, periphery machining as well as well as cut the radiuses on the end When we've finished all that, we can then mill those, uh, those spot tacks out Right, eh? That's all we need. Right, guys, we'll um, we'll set up and put the holes through the uh, the larger arm. Um, I'm just going to spot the ends for the radiuses that I'll just scribe in with, uh, with a set of dividers. The other ones we'll drill through and then ream. So what I've done there is I've just done a drawing, just setting up all my datum points for the holes. So quite straightforward. No rocket science in that one. So uh, we'll spot the holes first. Take it off, I'll radius those, and then we'll drill through with the rest. Right, I'll just mark these out with the radiuses. I'll come back and do that last little one just there.
Right well, guys, we've got that um, all finished off, all radiused up. And what we're going to do now is we're going to knock those welds off. And we'll get them back to individual plates. And then we'll start on the uh, on the small ones. Right, we've got four plates exactly the same. Right, we'll do the same with the uh, with the smaller arm set. And we'll get that on the go now. Alright, guys, we've uh, just leveled that up with the chuck jaw, and uh, we're just going to cut these welds off now and and break them into loops. So that's all of our leaves pretty much apart. And they're still just a little bit tight, that's it. Alright, so these are four leaves to make up our two pairs. I'll deburr those and uh, we'll get started on some of the other uh, machining elements. Right, guys, we're going to machine up these um, nut and the nut retainer. So these are a bit of round stock, uh, 4140. I'm just using uh, an old bit of uh, stud here. I'm using high tensile because of the uh, diameter of these six millimeter lugs. I could have made them eight millimeter. Maybe I should have gone eight millimeter. But this six millimeter, I just want the high tensile stress to uh, to be able to cope with that. Um, basically, just round um, hole drilled and tapped through it with the spigots on either end for the threaded nut. And the retainer is basically the same. It's uh, counterboard on the top there to give us a flat face, and drilled through with the two little spigots on either side. So we've got uh, two of each to make. So that's four bits of twenty mil stock. So this is a one inch. UNC bit of uh, old stud it was that was uh, thrown out so uh, I'll give it a new life Alright guys, we've got all these faced off the length. Now, before I machine the 6mm spigots into these, um, I want to leave the edges flat so that I can hold them in the vise, because the long ones I've got to um, draw and tap for an 8mm stud. And the shorter ones, I'll need to put a flat on that, because I want to put a thrust washer on either side, so I've got to machine or mill a flat in. Um, and then drill a hole through a 6mm hole to be able to um, get the end of the uh, threaded bar uh, locked off um, and then once we've done that we can then machine in the uh, the six mil spigots on either side so we'll get set up now get these centered up and uh, do these ones first we'll get them drilled and tapped to uh, to an M8 
Alright guys, we've got the, uh, the short ones in. These are the ones that's going to have a, um, uh, a 10 mil, sorry, 6 mil uh, hole drilled and reamed, and flats, two flats on either side so we can fit the thrust washers on. And this is to uh, allow the expand and collapse of the uh, of the jaws of the um, of the can twist vise. Um, I'm going to use a 12 mil uh, end mil here to cut across, so that when I'm cutting those six millimeter spigots on here, I'm not I'm not um, uh, cutting uh, intermittently. Um, I can cut a full thread and just be a little touch up with the file just to take the burrs off the edges. Anyway, we'll put the flat on first. We've got to come down about uh, 1.65 millimeters, so we'll, we'll lock that through now. Right, I'll set up to drill that next. Deburr that one, flip it over into a parallel to get that flat, and then we'll knock the flat on the other side. Right, guys, I've just roughly put these together. Just a light press fit. I will pull them apart to uh, to assemble the other components. So that's the small arms. That's the large arms. These pins will be pinned over to lock them in tight, and uh, that's the that's the pivot point there for him. And they're gonna operate. So. These uh, threaded sections we're going to make up now. Uh, I'm going to make the spigots 4.5 long. This plate thickness is 4 millimeters, so they're going to sit up about half a millimeter above there. And I'm going to drill and tap at the end of those spigots and fit some little round headed socket screws that will just thread into there and that'll look like a bit of a rivet as well. All right, we've got this set up in the Colt to start machining, so, uh, so we'll get. Call that done. Drill and tap an M4 up inside there, and uh, we'll flip it over and we'll machine it. Right, we've got it. So we're just going to machine up the uh, spigots on the nuts. So I've done that side. They're fairly straightforward, they just fit into the uh, ER32 collet. Alright guys, I've sort of put this together with some dowel pins just to make sure the clearances are working out. So it's looking quite good at the moment. Um, I just need to make up the pivot pin for here. So I've just got a, an old M8 bolt, I've just cut the head off. And uh, we're going to start machining the pins down for that. And I've also got to make up a spacer bush in the middle there. So we'll get onto that and make up two of those. And then I've just got to make up the um, the two feet on either side, and then we'll be ready to put this uh, put this together. All right, guys, let's get into making this. Part. Just demo that down and uh, hacksaw that off and then uh, we'll make the next one up. Cut them off the length and uh, we'll drill and tap with the M4s. Then we'll make up our little spacer bushes. Alright guys, we'll just knock this, uh, this little bush up. Fit up in there. I'll leave a little bit of length on this just to be able to machine it back to suit. 
And for those of you who don't know, today is uh, Anzac Day the 25th, Thursday the 25th, and uh, it's a day that we celebrate and commemorate the blokes who went overseas and, and fought for our freedoms. Uh, so my three boys have all been down to the dawn services with Pop, who's a, who's a return vet, a very proud, proud return vet. And we're doing the march today at, uh, at 10.30, so uh, my three boys will be marching with Pop, uh, Daniel, for the first time. So uh, he's really, really excited for that. So um, it's a public holiday here in Australia um, as part of that celebration. So, yeah, yeah, it's a big day for us. Right, let's get these finished out. Let's speed off a little bit. Yeah, so Pop's getting very old, and uh, as those old vets die off, family members are now starting to uh, to march in their place during Anzac Day, which is a wonderful tribute to those uh, those blokes who went overseas. Fight not only for us, but for the freedom of other countries. And uh, and Pop's a return Korean vet, and uh, he's had a, a pretty rough trot um, with himself over the years, with what he faced and what he went through, and uh, what a lot of the diggers went through. Right, let's get this bush finished out, and uh, we'll get the other pin made, and we might be able to start assembling some of this. We'll see how we're looking. Oh. So we'll get that face up to length. One thing I will mention is the, uh, particularly with the Korean vets, the Korean people absolutely treat the uh, Korean vets like absolute kings and, and Pop's been over to Korea a couple of times at the request of the Korean government and uh, my son's gone with him as his carer and uh, it's uh, it's been a wonderful experience and the, and the way that the uh, the old vets get treated by the by the people of Korea uh, when they're over there, the absolute respect they have for them, uh, for what they did uh, is uh, is unbelievable and it's a, it's a great tribute to those blokes that, um, that the Korean people still remember and it's still drummed into the uh, or taught uh, to, the, to the young kids uh, what uh, what transpired in their country and uh, and the sacrifices that uh, other countries made coming to their aid. So um, yeah, yeah. So you said some wonderful times over there with uh, with Michael. Right, moving right along. I'll get the other pin made up, and uh, as I said, we'll start assembling some of this, and we'll see how it's starting to look. Right, guys, we're going to uh, knock up the screw next. So it's basically. A a two-part piece, so we'll, we'll have our, our thread wheel machine down to a 6mm and uh, we'll have a section of the head wheel uh, machine down to 8mm to fit the uh, head, so I'll lock tight that and I'll pin that and then we've got the uh, the handle that goes through that we'll uh, just use a little grub screw to hold that down with, so that's a bit of stock we're going to use, a bit of 8mm um, all thread, I picked a 3 foot length up for about $3.50 from down my local nuts and bolts place all right, we'll get that in and uh, I'll start the show. Machine up the uh, the side of it now. Hello, guys. We'll just machine up the uh, the head end now. Right. Righto. Righto, guys. Right. We're just going to make up the. Uh, the head for the uh, screws that we've just made up. So they're going to be a press fit into there. Um, I'm going to drill this uh, set and a half and we're going to ream it out to eight so that it becomes a neat fit. So we'll lock tight and press that into place. 
so it's not going to move and uh, just the belts and braces we might look at putting a pin in there. I'm going to start off with a, um, I want to make the hole in here reasonably flat. I'll start off with a tapered drill and I've got a flat bottom drill that I'll, I'll finish it out with. length. Do the second one and we'll pop it back in the uh, AR32 and we'll just cut a little chamfer on that. We'll take it over the mill and we'll do our posture. Alright, done. Alright guys, we'll just pop this uh, hole through for the handle. Um, you probably all know this anyway, but I just, just for rough stuff, just use a rule and uh, eye it off to get it uh, horizontal across the jaws. Just a bit of brass stock I'm going to use to uh, to make up the handle. Uh, this is a bit of quarter inch stuff here. I thought it was six mil, but it's quarter. It's measuring a couple of thou below quarter, so I wanted to put a pilot through here to take as much of the pressure off the uh, size drill as I can. It's still going to be a loose fit, and I'm probably going to have to knurl a, a section of this and we'll lock tight that into place, I think, rather than uh, use the screw. Alright, we're just going to knurl this into place. I'm not really a big fan of these scissor style knurling blocks, but they do take the load off. And they're good for doing little short jobs like this one. reasonably coarse, we'll see if that's going to do the job for us. And that's going to be pretty, pretty heavy fit into that, which is ideal, that'll be a, a nice tap in fit. Alright, All right, guys, next uh, item we've got on the agenda is I'm going to make up these little um, thrust washers, and uh, these sit on the end of the screw, and where the cap head screw goes up. To act as a thrust um, between the um, uh, the stop spigot stop for the uh, for the clamp. So I'm going to do these out of aluminium bronze. That's just a bit of an old riser that I I had left over um, when I was doing a lot of the cooter boat castings. Um, chain plates and the masthead brackets for the stays I did out of aluminium bronze because of the uh, the high tensile properties on that, but Aluminium bronze is a horrible stuff to cast. It pours like porridge, poor definition, and shrinks like crazy. And on top of that, it's an absolute mongrel of machine. So, very hard and tough. I'd rather stick noodles in my eyeballs and machine this stuff. But anyway, it'll be ideal for our thrust washers. It's not going to, um, it's not going to deform when we apply pressure onto it. So, all right, we'll get to set up in the three jaw, and uh, and we'll get these knocked out. Just a little trick. If you look at aluminium bronze, it's got a, a goldy colour. Now, apart from aluminium in the mix, and it's only a small percentage of aluminium, it has around about 1-2% to 2 of iron mixed into it. And the way you can tell aluminium bronze, if you do pick it up um, and you want to sort of do a little test on it, is uh, just get yourself a... I've got a little rare earth magnets. Uh, just pop it on, and you'll see it's actually magnetic. It actually get it off, um, attracts the chips, so often uh, if I go to a scrapos, uh, I'll take a file on a little piece of paper, uh, file a section off with my little rare earth magnet uh, underneath, and uh, if it moves the, uh, the filings around, you've got aluminium bronze. <laughs> I 
Uh, we'll deburr that and set that off for uh, set that up for fun. Alright guys, we've got this bit of uh, black stock, it's 25mm square, we're going to knock that down to 20mm uh, I'm going to cut it off to lengths, machine it to length and then uh, I've got some uh, 45 degree um, cuts to make into that just to help support any round stock we might be using with these uh, can't twist clamps. Alright, we've got this machine down to 20mm square and uh, I'll just cut it up into white again. Well, I'll be just knocking two of the blocks back to size, 20mm uh, square, and uh, next one we'll do the 14mm ones which are for the, uh, for the, um, for the inner, inner arms. Alright, so I'm going to take a, about 1.9mm off this. We're done. You might have noticed I've marked two sides as black and they're the inner faces. They've just got a little bit more clearance so they're not going to bind up uh, when they're twisting. Right, I'll uh, set up and we'll machine the two 14mm thick ones and then uh, we'll start looking at putting some holes through them or we'll uh, cut the uh, 45 degree slots in them. Right, guys, we've got the uh, 14mm wafers centered up so um, we'll, uh, we'll center that up Drill it through and then uh, and then ram it out the six. I might mention too, I'm using uh, Joe Poreski's little tip, which is using a bit of cardboard to uh, make sure that they clamp evenly. So I've got the two um, two stacked together here at the moment, and uh, I've used that a number of times now. I thought that was a wonderful little tip from Joe. Done. We'll set up the uh, 20 mil square. Alright, guys. Next. We're going to rivet these uh, these pins into place. Um, I've just made up a, a little anvil that the pins sit in. and actually locates on the shoulder. Um, I want it to locate on the shoulder rather than on the uh, the six mil diameter because I don't want to upset that when I go to put the second half on. Now I've already done one. Pin that over. I like riveting in these situations because. Not only does it upset the head, it also expands the metal into the hole and makes it a very, very, very tight fit. Um, almost a mechanical fit. Um, apart from that, it also looks quite good. But this is the old way they used to do, uh, do, do boilers and ships. They actually used to heat the rivets up, um, form the heads, and uh, as that uh, metal shrunk or, or cooled off, it would shrink and contract and actually pull the two plates together even tighter. So you ended up with a, uh, a watertight seal or a steam sight tight seal. And it didn't quite, quite, uh, quite seal off. You used to cork over the, uh, over the joint. And this is fairly straightforward doing this. We'll just take our time and we don't need to hammer it hard. We just need to be uh, consistent and just uh, fairly accurate. Nicely. All, right. All done. That's a very, very tight fit. All right, I will continue on putting uh, these together and I will assemble all the components in and we'll put the other half together and we'll, uh, we'll rivet that in. Alright guys, we're um, going to do the second half on these. I just want to show you just how they go together now. That's the, the beauty of having these gang drilled as a, as a set. 
that uh, everything lines up pretty pretty well. And it just becomes a just a light tap fit just to get everything right. You see, it's important not to put. Uh, <laughs> that's my wife coming in. Um, it's important to make sure you've got all your components together before you actually start your riveting over. Because uh, as I found on this one, I actually put the riveter in the wrong spot and I had to cut it out. And I tell you what, um, when you take the head off to punch them out, they're, uh, they're extremely <laughs> hard to get out. Uh, they really, really do, uh, do bite in when you, uh, when you paint them in. Oh yeah, so they're all home. Alright, we'll start the riveting. Once again, slow and steady. Alright guys, we'll start uh, we'll start assembling this. So we've got the bush in that one there, a little spacer bush. So I'll try and get this lined up as best we can. So we've got a little aluminium bronze washers here, thrust washers. It's a tiny bit stiff, but um, it'll be in quite nicely, I think. Right, I'm just going to get the two little feet. I know we'll uh, we'll pop those little feet in now. So I'll just line those up. Now I'm going to make it so that I can remove these jaws fairly easy. I, I will machine the slots under that at a later date. And I can put aluminium ones in there if I want soft ones or brass ones. But, uh, they can be easily, easily replaced just by popping this pin out. It's done. I'm really happy with, uh, with the finished result on that. I'll finish the other one off and uh, we'll give it a go. I'm going to uh, clamp up a bit of flat bar onto an angle plate and uh, we'll see how well they hold. But, uh, yeah, very happy with that. Right, I'll pop the next one together and as I said, we'll, we'll give them a go. Right, we've got a bit of 40mm plate here. I've got that, uh, I'm going to clamp that up against the uh, the angle plate here. We'll just open up our jaws. This has taken them right out to the limit, so we'll see if this is a fair test for them. Because they're almost out at maximum throat. And they're right on the extremity of their reach. I might move them across a little bit actually. <clears throat> well, 
that's done up pretty firm. All right, we'll, uh, we'll whack a cutter in there and see how we go. So they work really well. I'm very, very happy with those. All right, guys. Well, thank you again, Emma, for uh, for putting the comp on. And uh, I guess this is my entry. Okay, guys. I'll see you soon.